People who don't want to tax the 1%, but are not in the 1%, why? Warning, there's a lot of redditors who know j about economics offering economic opinions here. Tread lightly. Usually, any objection I have, won't be about the general principle of taxing the 1%, it will be about how the tax is structured. The rich person that everyone hates lately is Bezos, who added enormous net worth during the pandemic, while small businesses suffered. So let's talk how to tax Bezos. Suppose you tell me that to tax the rich you want to increase income taxes on incomes over 400,000 a year. Okay, but Bezos made under 100k in salary. His real worth is from his Amazon stock. It's not that I dislike a tax on 400k a year income or more, but that tax falls on the upper middle class without really targeting the truly rich. Edit. A lot of people really vehemently disagree with my choice here. Let's rephrase that as it targets the rich, but not the wealthy 1%. Now let's say you want to tax the stock he holds. This is a better idea, but I don't really love it. I don't care how much Bezos holds. I care how much he spends. The image of rich people sitting on a hoard of money they don't use like dragons misses the point that money is imaginary. It's when rich people use that money to buy up land, food, buildings, gas, energy, and jump to the front of the line in medicine, access, etc. That is the problem. So what I really want to do is say hey, every time Bezos turns his Amazon stock into money, I want to tax that. I want it taxed on a progressive curve same as income, in fact, I want it to be treated as income. Let him carry forward his cash investments and even his sweat equity as a basis for the investment, but when he realizes those gains, he's getting taxed. So it's possible to dislike the idea of a particular tax on the 1% without disliking the concept. A lot of people who dislike a plan to tax the 1% might be quibbling over the particulars. There are people who would dislike my realized gains taxation plan, no doubt, without hating the general aims. By the way guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to the channel. It will help us out quite a bit, and if you don't enjoy the videos in the future anymore, you can always unsubscribe. Let's get back to the video. The real issue is the filthy rich, the 2 million households with over 10 million dollar net worth. Politicians always leave them alone and just tax the upper middle class to oblivion. These are hard working lawyers, doctors, business executives, partners, etc. All this does is entrench the filthy rich, the generational wealth that doesn't work and just lives off passive income and makes it impossible for new people to enter this class. It's ridiculous to increase the already insane taxes people with high income make, but continue to let the filthy rich pay low capital gains taxes, step basis when they die on assets, extremely low estate tax, etc. Our tax policy continuously punished the hard workers, and continues to give handouts to the filthy rich rent seeking class. I oppose taxing the 1%, because any plan that passes will just end up taxing the upper middle class. Again, the Democrats are focusing on increasing the top income tax buckets, instead of seriously rectifying capital gains taxes on the filthy rich. There's some talk of it, but we all know it'll just be people making dollar sign 200k plus an income who end up paying the brunt of things as always. Take a look at how our tax dollars are currently being spent. Some of the largest expenses in the US federal budget go to a broken healthcare system which enables things like $600 band-aids and a military, that is the size of the next 7 largest militaries combined. Collecting more tax dollars from the 1% will just mean more misappropriated spending to line the pockets of pharma giants, military contractors, and the politicians they lobby. We'd be taxing one billionaire for the profit of another. Taxing our citizens more, whether it be the 1% or the 99%, will not magically solve these shortcomings. In fact, I think it serves as more of a distraction from real issues at hand. Once politicians start showing they can responsibly spend our tax dollars, then we can discuss collecting more taxes from anyone. The 1% also take advantage of tax loopholes, and saying we are going to raise taxes on them is just more BS signaling from politicians. 
closing these loopholes would go much further than increasing the rate in their tax, brackets which they weasel their way out of anyway. We'd be taxing one billionaire for the profit of another well put. Military contractors, defense spending, and pharmaceutical slash elder care companies, Medicare slash Medicaid, would be where all this money ends up. The federal government doesn't do much direct welfare and probably shouldn't, although direct cash payouts would probably be more honest than the regulatory monopolies and money pits currently created by US tax dollars. Because it never happens. It's always a tax on the working and middle class. Carbon tax is said to be revenue neutral, and gives an incentive to stop using fossil fuels. First off, every government that's done this has kept a portion of the tax, so it's not revenue neutral. And working class and middle class don't have enough money to retrofit their house, and replace their vehicle with a Tesla. Guess who can afford retrofitting, Teslas and reducing their carbon? The super rich. And why would I want to give the government more money to do anything? The same ones that screw over the working and middle class can be trusted to do the right thing with the money? Like what, increase the military budget as they always have done. In Canada, we can't even get hard surgeries right. We literally kill people, because we want access that is fair. For hard surgeries. Wealth disparities destroy stable countries. Ultra wealthy people have too much of an impact on democracies. This does not change my ultimate concerns with the wealth tax. I think there is a legitimate argument, but the actually pronounced wealth disparity is made up of the 0.001%, rather than the 1%. The 0.001% have the wealth hidden, and any tax is applied to those wealthy who have hidden their money in the Caribbean, so any tax is ineffectual. Until we have transparency of global wealth any tax imposed on the ultra wealthy will only actually affect the upper middle class the top 30%, as the 1% might not have vast hidden wealth reserves, but they can still employ smart accountants to minimize tax. In the UK most of the people who are in the top 1% of taxpayers make up over 30% of the tax paid to the government, but it is not the perennially wealthy. It is the people who appear once in their life in the 1%, when they sell their home, or their parents home, when they die to pay death tax who normally make up that 1%. The truly wealthy are never taxed by wealth tax. There are taxes that disproportionately affect every tax bracket, sales tax the poor, property and death tax affects the middle class hard, until you are wealthy enough to get a top account then an offshore company. The issue with a wealth tax, is that it's difficult to determine how much wealth any person has. Being a billionaire doesn't mean you're just hoarding a billion dollars in a bank account, it means that the stuff you own, typically stock in a company, is worth that much. How do you go about taxing stock in a company, are they expected to sell more of it every year to pay their taxes? I'm sure there are some ways around it. But the point is that it's difficult, and wealthy people are going to be resourceful, and avoid tax wherever they can. Not to mention, if we suddenly tax the hell out of all of them, they will absolutely just leave. Or just list their official residence in another country with lower taxes. I know there must be some way, to deal with an enormous wealth disparity like this, but simply tax the rich is way harder than it sounds, and won't really solve much. Because I value what I think is fair, even when it doesn't benefit me. I see it as a huge act of hypocrisy to preach ideals purely, because they would benefit you. The way I see it, anyone who works enough, or is lucky enough to have lots of money deserves to keep the same portion that everyone else does. Systems like this will never work, because everyone is going to be mad at someone, and many people blame their problems on the rich, because it's an easy scapegoat, that absolves them of all responsibility, when it comes to any financial position they are in. If we perpetuate this outdated thought process, we will always be oscillating between policies that favor the poor and policies that favor the rich and there would never be any consensus. I'm just about as poor as someone can get, and even I realize the merit of forming opinions, based on logic instead of emotion, which is why my ideal government has proportional taxes for all incomes, where everyone pays the same percent of their paycheck. There are a few things, that I would rather not be paying taxes for, that is programs I think should be abolished, and thus nobody would pay for them, but that's a whole other debate. 
for starters, I think everyone should be taxed less. The greater the tax burden, the more money gets funneled into government, and neither politicians nor government bureaucracy are effective managers of money. More money also means larger government, which I also generally oppose. I'm no economist, but it just makes sense to me that people should keep as much of their own income as possible. Taxing the top 1%, or 5%, or 10%, or whatever the actual percentage would end up being, may sound fine, because they have more to give, but every time I hear it suggested it sounds a hell of a lot more like targeting the haves to pay the have-nots, a form of class warfare using government policy as a weapon of choice. I'm against government selectively demanding more from one group than any other, because that's antithetical to the basic ideas of equality and equal protection under the law. I also have problems with any policy that makes government more dependent upon people who are, by definition, already rich and powerful. A recent example happened in New Jersey, where a single resident leaving was enough to cause budget problems. That only needs to happen a few times before the state starts catering to that person to keep them around. Unintended consequences are sure to follow. Ever wonder why the super rich don't mind these income taxes btw? Because they don't rely on income, they're already rich. The 1% of earners each year is far less static than you might think, usually a few times in a person's life, when they sell a home, or a business or other long term investment. And it's those people who will get screwed by a big income tax on the 1% of earners. However, those people aren't the ones contributing to wealth inequality. If you really want to talk about wealth inequality, and how to reduce it, which is a good goal, since it's correlated with social instability, you need to focus on wealth taxation, not on income taxation. They are two very different things and again, it's interesting that the super rich have no issue with increasing income tax, but I wonder what they'd think of a wealth tax. Rich people, oh, a 90% income tax for those that have a salary above 250k slash month, okay my salary will be $1 now plus stock options. My opinion on the matter is that we need to audit our tax spending and find where the trillions of dollars we already collect is going. There is so much mismanagement it will make your head spin. While on this point, if a government contract is involved in something they figure they will just pay the balance as the government really doesn't have any money and it's just your taxes. Similarly, with health care medications and procedures tend to cost ridiculous amounts of money for arbitrary reasons and insurance companies will just pay it, ultimately kicking the fan down to you the consumer by raising your premiums. I'm not against taxing the 1%, but if you're going to do it, tax churches and universities too. I don't know much about economics and I've always just wondered why not have the same percentage across the board? Flat tax rates are aggressive. A man who earns just $20,000 is far less capable of giving up $4,000 than a man who earns $200,000 is capable of giving up $40,000. This is because the first man is much closer to the poverty line. In practice, the second man's standard of living is much less impeded by the flat 20% tax rate than the man who goes from $20,000 to $16,000. Thank you for taking the time to explain. Although I do think that a flat rate would be, in theory, fair, but looking at from all perspectives, it would be tough. I'm sure the one making 200k still wouldn't like giving up the 40k but you're right, it would be easier if they are not living beyond their means. So there's one thing that some people need to get clear in their heads, that there is a difference between the top 1% of wage earners and the top 1% of wealthy individuals. The top 1% wage earners pay a f tax, those earning over 100k in most countries tend to be very highly taxed. But the real trouble is, when wealth is accumulating due to inheritance or ownership of assets. The top 1% in terms of wealth is the group we need to be going after. It's patently ridiculous, that we deem that someone who earns a huge amount passively just by the fact, that they already own capital will pay less of their gains in tax than someone who works for it. It should be the other way around. Owners of capital should face higher taxes when realizing gains than workers, to reflect the actual effort applied to generate those gains. 
if I work 60 hour weeks in a company to contribute to its success then how is it fair that the guy who just invested some of his inherited wealth into the business gets taxed proportionately far less than me? Which of us did the actual work to generate the gains here? Again, we don't want to penalize workers who are trying to save for their retirement, so a progressive system on capital gains seems more fair. Say the first 300k per year is at a lower rate but anything more than that is taxed as heavily as a high wage would be. I'm against it cause 100% of the time they raise taxes, only the 99% pay more tax and the 1% always have some means to evade tax. Egg can't tax on capital appreciation, which makes sense that it shouldn't be taxed, or if it's taxed, they set up a company in Ireland. Making the economy more competitive by breaking up monopolies, Egg Amazon is a better way to foster wealth redistribution. Also it makes the economy more free and more competitive and less planned. Capitalism thrives under a free economy, not corporatism. If anything, taxes should be lowered for small and medium sized businesses to lower market entry barrier so they can compete with giant corporates since it's not easy for them to evade taxes like Amazon and Apple do. Because they are already taxed and increasing the tax of the 1% makes no sense when they already pay most of the taxes and they earned their money by one way or another so why should we punish the rich for their achievements that most likely worked hard for and the tax will only increase for everybody else and the us will be in even more debt because they're not going to spend it on the people just like raising minimum wage it. We'll ruin our economy and get rid of jobs because they couldn't pay employees so no we should not raise taxes we shouldn't even have them. We fought for freedom from taxes and now we're taxing whatever it is no so where does it end why would someone want to be successful when they'll just get punished for their hard work where do we draw the line? Raising taxes on the 1% causes them to find loopholes so they pay less or hide their money offshore because the tax code is a confusing mess. They hide their money from taxes by hiring experts who, for lack of a better term, game the system, because no one wants to pay taxes. How do you think Amazon was able to pay zero dollars in taxes? They have the took a loss in certain divisions of the company, but made large profits with others. Since they took a loss, they are able to write that loss off of their taxes. Encouraging the 1% to not hide their money means more money in the US economy. If we have to tax income, we should tax at a flat rate with no deductions. The only purpose for a complex tax code is to allow people with the resources, aka the 1%, to find the aforementioned loopholes. I'm not upset at Amazon. I don't blame them for using the existing tax code to their advantage, to keep more of their money. I'm upset at the politicians, who keep feeding us the same BS about fighting for the interests of the little guy. Fighting for the little guy means lowering taxes for everyone. I make dollar sign 250k a year or so, below even the literal 1% cut off, and well below what people mean when they say 1%. Historically it seems taxing the rich in my lifetime has meant increasing taxes on ultimately working class people like me as opposed to any nuanced reforms that would address legitimate wealth inequality. I feel like people view the rich as an abstract conglomerate of people who make more than they do, and punching into a high income tier is really an eye opener for just how insane and unachievable certain amounts of wealth are. So in a sense I think there's a lot of room to tax the 1%, but I'm hesitant to really outwardly endorse a push to do so, because it will be a net loss for me. I pay far beyond a fair tax rate already in my extremely biased opinion. Secondly, I feel we have literal hundreds of billions in government spending we should cut before we as anyone in America for another dime. Taxes are supposed to keep the lights on not institute societal reforms. I feel like people view the rich as an abstract conglomerate of people who make more than they do, and punching into a high income tier is really an eye opener for just how insane and unachievable certain amounts of wealth are. I know a lot of people in the 8 figures wealthy, but obtainable off of sheer hard work with luck. Some in the nines, universally required to have some luck but nothing absurd. Then some billionaires like Bloomberg have 700 times that. I've been a Fortune 500 business consultant, clients such as Capital One, 
for decades and I've been behind closed doors in corporate headquarters as well as spending time with the very wealthy within their mansions over the years. The big secret they lobby, bribe, politicians for isn't mainly tax avoidance. Tax avoidance for the wealthy is mostly a red herring, and they collectively spend billions to make sure Americans don't realize where the real profit is. Taxes are much less important than having the wealthy pay for their own toxic, extremely costly business externalities themselves. Instead what they are allowed to do is profitably dump their externalities upon the rest of society who pay with their own lives, poor health and lots of money. These corporatists are vultures upon society, but they use their multi-billion dollar corporate media complex, including search and social, to propagandize society to punch across and down instead of up. Right-wing media scapegoats immigrants and distorts progressive agendas as communism while so-called left-wing or so-called centrist corporate media poisons average Americans against their own best interests by attacking progressive agendas in other various ways via selective editing, censorship, distortions, etc. Robert T. Kiyosaki has put this issue very well in his book Rich Dad Poor Dad talking about the history of taxes. Two taxes are being discussed first one levied in Britain for the fight against Napoleon, second one levied in US, to pay for the civil war. Within 50 years both of these taxes became permanent, although the reasonings for them ceased to exist, what these historical dates fail to reveal is that both of these taxes were initially levied against only the rich. The idea of taxes was made popular and accepted by telling the poor and the middle class that taxes were created only to punish the rich. This is how masses voted for the law and it became constitutionally legal. Although it was intended to punish the rich, in reality it would end up punishing the very people who voted for it, the poor and the middle class. He goes on to say that the rich usually circumvent these taxes one way or another. Meanwhile the appetite of government gets larger and larger which causes these taxes to turn against people. Today taxes against rich exist, but they find a way to not pay. Furthermore they steal taxpayers money with bribes to corrupt officials 2020 is a great example. The 1% is plenty taxed. What I don't want is punitive taxes that punish people for prospering. Because if you punish people for taking economic risks, I'm convinced that's the beginning of economic stagnation. The harder we make it to make money in the USA the more likely our richest will invest somewhere else instead. We need the 1% to feel comfortable investing in our economy rather than someone else's and get a good return for it. That's the best way to ensure a healthy private sector that can carry our economy and allow our people to earn a living. With that said I'm all in favor of closing certain tax loopholes to make sure the top 1% is paying their share. But moderation needs to rule the day in terms of punishing investors for making money or punishing the Americans with the most money to invest from becoming investors in the first place. Brief history lesson please. What killed off the robber barons of the late 19th early 20th century? Conge. Clark. Morgan. Rockefeller. Etc. Like today there were the super rich who were the 0.001% and then there was most everyone else, namely the working class and poor. By 1920 or so most of the robber barons had died out, or their wealth distributed between heirs. Except for a few like Howard Hughes and Henry Ford, why did the ultra rich die out until they made a comeback in the 1990s? The death of the robber barons had at least as much to do with antitrust as taxes. The comeback in the 90s was in part due to misguided incentives. The USA said no paying your CEOs of failing companies too much money, so execs started getting paid mostly in stock options, which has actually driven their total comp up massively, and ironically options are taxed far less than the income that it was replaced. There are a number of reasons. I don't think the government is more efficient at allocating resources than the free market. I'd rather have Jeff Bezos blow billions on strippers and cocaine, or whatever than have tax revenue be wasted fighting pointless wars, or lining the pockets of special interest groups. Most tax plans that tax the 1% won't functionally tax the 1% but everyone else. This is how income tax started, politicians pitched that it would only apply to 1% of earners but it soon was expanded to include everyone. 
new taxes almost always function the same way. The US does not have a revenue problem. The government doesn't need to generate more money. They have plenty of money, they just misspend it. We need to be cutting spending, not giving the criminally negligent politicians even more money to spend. I could keep going but these are the big three. Functionally, if we ever implemented a tax the 1% proposal, you'll find that in practicality the new money raised will go to special interest groups slash project slash war, come from your own pocket, and further increase the deficit, since revenue generation has never been an issue in the first place. This is the end of the video, thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two.